Welcome back to the Home Lab, and today I've got a really interesting calculating device to show you. One that was nearly obsolescent before it was invented, and it's these. The Genet Luca rulers. As you may know, when I first set up this channel, uh, my intention was to do physics things without lots and lots of mathematics. Well, I'm breaking from that tradition slightly at the moment, but you must realise that mathematics is a really wonderful and quite a beautiful thing. And I think you'll see today that these rulers are really, really clever the way they just use sort of pictures on them to do quite difficult mathematics. So we'll break with tradition and do a little bit of maths. What I want to show you is a wonderful and simple device that enables you to rapidly multiply two numbers together with very little effort or mathematical skill. And these are the Genet Luca rulers. These are named after Henri Genet, who was a French railway engineer, who after seeing a problem that was posed by a French mathematician, Edouard Luca, in about 1885, came up with a solution to the problem, which he then demonstrated to the Académie Française in 1891. They consist of a series of wooden rods, and the device unfortunately became obsolescent almost as quickly as it was invented. So let's have a look at this interesting calculating device and see how it worked. But first, I've got to build one. Let's have a quick look at how I made these rulers. So the first thing I did was I went to Wikipedia and there's a file there which has a picture of all the rulers that you need. So I downloaded that, scaled it to the size I needed and then printed out a set of rulers. So that's an index ruler and all the rulers from naught to nine. I wanted to make the rulers a little bit more rigid. So uh, instead of cutting out some wood myself, which would have taken a while, I just ordered very cheaply on eBay some wooden rulers and I'm gonna use those to glue the printed rulers onto. The next thing I had to do was a rather tedious bit of cutting out the paper rulers and making sure that they were exactly the right size to be glued onto the wooden rulers I bought. And like all my YouTube videos, it seems to be a repetitive process, but it was one of those things that after you'd done a few of them and messed up a few, um, you got pretty good at it and it didn't take me very long at all. With the paper rulers cut out, the next job was to glue them onto my wooden rulers. So um, a little bit of Pritt stick uh, liberally applied to the back of them, and then I could stick it onto the front of the ruler. I know it has a bit of a curved shape on it, but it seemed to work rather well. And of course there was naught to nine, which is 10 of them, and the index one to do. So it took a while, but um, it was easily finished within one evening. So with all the rulers done, it was ready to get calculating. But the eagle-eyed amongst you might notice that I've got two twos in this pile and I've also got two ones as well. And I'm going to explain in a minute why I did that. So now I've made the rulers, let's have a closer look at them and how they work. So the first thing to notice is there's only two different types of rulers. There's this one here, the index ruler, and that has numbers down the side, which are the multiplier. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You wouldn't want to multiply by zero. I'm not sure why you'd want to multiply by one either, but never mind, it's there for completeness. And then these rulers, which all look pretty similar, have a number along the top, which is the numbers that you are going to use to create the multiplicand. In other words, that's the number you're multiplying up by this. So if I just push these sideways here and we forget about those, if I wanted to multiply uh, 6 times 123, those are the rulers I'd need. If I wanted to multiply 5 by 312, then those are the rulers I'd need. And finally, if I wanted to multiply 314 by 5, I would need to have on the top that there, 314. So let's have a closer look at how we'd actually use them to do a multiplication. 
So let's kick off with a really easy calculation. I realise you wouldn't use the rulers for this, but 32 times 2 will show us how they work. So uh, 2 is the multiplier on the index, and the number we're going to multiply up is 32. So we take the 3 ruler and the 2 ruler. We don't need any of the others, and I'll zoom in on this in a minute so you can see a bit more closely. And we push them neatly together against the, the index. OK, now here's the clever bit. We're multiplying by 2, so we start off in that row, OK, and we read the topmost number here, which is a 4. Then we follow the arrow along to what number it points to here, and that's a 6, and there we go. You can go further if you want and check that uh, there's a 0 here, so there's no extra 1 in front. I mean, you could put a 0 there if you wanted, but clearly the answer is 64. So it's actually a very quick method once you get used to it. So if that wasn't too clear on the screen, I've zoomed in a bit. So here's the index ruler, 32 times 2. So we need the 3 ruler up against the index lined up and the 2 ruler lined up. And remember that it's times 2, so we're using this row here. And the way you do it, if you remember, is you go right to the right-hand side and take the topmost number in that row. So there's the 4, the first digit. Then you follow the arrow along to the 6, so there's the second digit. And if you need to, follow the arrow along to the third digit here, which is a 0. So 32 times 2 is clearly 64. Well, I hear you say that was probably all too easy. So let's do a harder one. Let's do 79,438 times 7. So it'll be a bit slow as I do it in front of the camera, but when you get good at this, it's a really quick process. So I'll just collect up my rulers off the side here. And then I need 7, ruler number 9, number 4, there it is, uh, number 3, which we had earlier, there it is, and number Eight. So I'll push the others out of the way. Now, remember, I've got to line those up. Here we go. Right, we're all lined up to do 79,438 times by 7. So if you remember, the way we do it is go right the way across to this side on the 7 row. Take the first number, which is 6. Follow the other arrow down here, this arrow, to 6. Follow it up to 0 then follow that arrow across to 6, and this arrow across to 5, and then this arrow across to 5. So I'll now write that down. So we've got 6, 6, 0. So remember, it's 6, 6, 0. So I'll follow that again, 6, 6, 0. And then that points to a 6, 5, and this arrow points to a 5. 6, 5, 5. So 79,438 times 7 is 556,066. Now, if you remember, these were invented before the electronic uh, pocket calculator. Um, but let's just do that calculation on the pocket calculator to check we were right. So 79438 times 7 equals, and there it is, for, uh, 556,066. So the rulers, without any batteries, they're always going to work, worked perfectly. So finally, you might ask, well, what about a multiplicand that has repeated digits in it? In other words, this has got two twos in it and two ones. Well, it's dead simple. You have two copies of the one ruler and two copies of the two rulers. So you can have sort of multiple sets of these as long as each numbered ruler looks the same. So let's set this one up. So index always on the left. Then I have to go for two. Then one. Then six. There we go. A bit tricky, this. Uh, then seven. Uh, then my second one ruler, which is the same as that one, and finally a two. OK, so I'll line all of those up. And it's usually good to sort of push them against a hard surface like that. And I'll push my index ruler across there. OK, and now we can do, uh, what is it, 216,712 times by six. And we might compare doing it uh, with uh, pen and paper. 
So let's see how quickly we can do this one. So times by six, so it's the six row and we take the top number always of the six row. So it's two, which points to seven, which points to two, and this arrow points to zero, this arrow points to zero, and then we're on this arrow here, which points up to the three. It's a bit difficult to see, but that zero is part of uh, that arrow. And then this arrow points to one. So if I write those numbers down in order, two, seven, two, zero, zero, three, one. That's the answer we get to 216,712 multiplied by six. So do you really want me to check it or do you trust the rulers? So two, one, six, seven, one, two times by six equals, and there it is. What is that? Um, a hundred one million three hundred thousand two hundred and seventy two. So I hope you agreed that once you get skilled with these, it's really rather quick. You just stick together the numbers you want and very quickly follow along. And you can usually memorise the answer or write it down on a piece of paper. So it's an incredibly effective way to do multiplications. Granted, you're only multiplying by one digit, but of course you can then multiply the answer again. Or if it's times 50, you just add a zero. You know, you use other mathematical tricks uh, to work out uh, longer or bigger numbers uh, of the multiplier. But I think they're really effective. They're going to work at all temperatures in all environments, as long as you can see them. Maybe you need some glow in the dark ones and your batteries are never going to run out. So I hear some of you say, well, you could do it by hand. So let's very quickly try. So we'll get the rulers um, out of the way and uh, do the whole thing by hand. So uh, what have we got? We've got two, one, six, seven, one, two times by six. And then, oh, yeah, we know what these rulers are for now. We don't need them anymore. We can just use them for ruling. Right. OK, let's see how we get on here. So two sixes are twelve. Carry the one. One six is six. Seven. Seven sixes are 42. Carry the four. Six sixes are 36. Plus the four is 40. One six is six. Plus four is 10. Carry the one. Two sixes are 12. Plus the one is 13. So I guess that's how you do it longhand. And um, I think it's probably a little bit slower when you get really quick with the rulers. Um, they really, really are quick and you don't kind of have to think about the numbers at all. You just uh, follow the process. Anyway, I enjoy using both methods. Just before we finish, I thought it might be useful to have a look at how these rulers actually work. And it's easiest to do with the index ruler and a low number like three. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply three by one. So if you remember, we go to the one row and take the first number and it's three and there is no carry. So it's just zero, three, it's three. Uh, obviously, two times three being six. So we go across and there it is. The first one is six and the arrow points across to no carry. Same with three threes. There's the nine and the arrow points across to no carry digit. But what the arrow does is it shifts down one. In other words, it creates a carry. So we know that four times three is twelve one two so there is the two and then we don't go across to here we have to carry the one so the arrow points down taking that carry into account and if there's ever a carry of two then the arrow will point down to or typically it will split as the numbers get bigger and bigger and point down to a lower number if we had to carry a two rather than a one and an example is here right down here um, with the eight so two eights are 16 three eights are 24 so there's the four and we follow this arrow down to the uh, two but there's a split here so there might be a calculation over here which needs uh, an extra bit of carry so um, it's something to think about i haven't explained it fully but you'll see why the arrows move down and don't always stay pointing at the zero. So I do hope you enjoyed that video on the Genet Luca rulers and you feel you've got a better understanding now of how these work. Why not try um, making some for yourself and you can mention in the comments um, how you got on.
Anyway, um, thanks ever so much for supporting the channel. Do subscribe if you feel that's uh, worthwhile and have a look at some of the other videos I've done. Do, of course, stay to the end because after I finish, I always cut in a few bits that you might not have seen, but are still hopefully of interest to you. Anyway, I'll be making another video soon and do please join me then.